so, uh, so this is Dr. Chaudhary. I'm uh, restarting the idea of working on a topic which is so very important and relevant and are pre present in medical practices, uh, which is about being overweight and obese. Uh, and how do we manage that with wisdom rather than just getting ourselves cut up into pieces of stomachs being out and here and there. Um, and this really kind of sparked my interest because we see a lot of people struggling with obesity and its medical and clinical and psychiatric consequences. Um, um, and it became really very prevalent, I mean, very relevant as uh, we were looking at the data and the information of the number of people who are children and are heavyweight and the consequences of their uh, conditions on their everyday living. Uh, I mean, people get, get you know, kids get teased, they have joint conditions and, and, and other disorders which are so very severe, and, 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 uh, and it takes away the playfulness of life into you know having to struggle with the medical issues and so forth. So having said that, <clears throat> um, it's not somebody else's problem, it's our problem. Even this morning I was talking to a patient who I had, um, somebody else had started uh, her on a medication in the hospital for manic condition and that medicine is known to cause weight gain. And her first thing was that in six months she has gained about 20, 20 pounds or so. And she said, in spite of me doing all the exercises and the thing that I'm doing, I have cravings for sweet and have a hard time losing this weight. And my even my face is getting puffed up. I don't know, I don't know what to do with that. And my first thing was I knew this medicine has to be looked at because that is that is a weight promoting medicine. Uh, but it's the issues related to medicines, sedentary lifestyle or many other things. So Zayda will give us a little statistics about some of the obesity numbers in US. Obesity actually is becoming uh, like an epidemic nowadays in the United States. And there was a time when it was uh, people were underweight and now the problem is overweight, more nutrition. Most of the developing countries, if you see, they are underweight because of undernutrition. So obesity has a lot of consequences to deal with. Uh, with obesity, you can have stroke, you can have uh, high blood pressure, you can have uh, blood vessels damage, heart attack, many factors which can lead to poor health. So if you see, it's becoming a public health problem. Um, for the first time in the human history, actually in the year 2000, it was estimated that there were more overweight patients people in the United States than underweight. And it is becoming like a nation crisis. Um, Surgeon General, a vision for a fit and healthy nation 2010, what they said, the present obesity epidemic threatens progressively related to increasing Americans' quality and years of healthy life. So why it is, it is actually a number one one of the number one killers, I would say. And if you see, sedentary lifestyle has much to do with obesity and poor nutrition, which we are going to talk. Um, childhood obesity is becoming one of the issues. If you see the childhood obesity is like, sometimes you have intracranial hypertension, pulmonary disorders like sleep apnea. You have hypertension, high cholesterol, a uh, lot of liver problems gallbladder diseases, and type 2 diabetes is becoming so common in young children, and it was not like that before. It was type 1, which was usually in the younger children. Now, just because of this uh, uh, issues of the lifestyle, we are having a lot of issues with the type 2 diabetes. And how it happens when you are a child, you're a healthy child. And then slowly, gradually, you get into the lifestyle in which you're not eating properly or sitting there, computer, gadgets, video games, eating. And then you become mildly obese. Then you go on, you become moderately obese. And then cycle starts, and then you become an obese adult. And obese adults goes, and when you have children, you're having, giving them the same lifestyle. And this cycle starts over and over again. So. In obesity, um, how it is complicated is that you have a high level of your fats around your organ systems, your viscerals. And um, in one of the slides which I was presenting, there was a normal fat and uh, 
when you see in the least patient how much fat it is around your abdomen and around all the viscera, along the liver, along, name it. So that can lead to, again, in the adults also insulin resistance. Type 2 diabetes, you can have increased lipids, bad cholesterol is le level is high, and you can have high blood pressure. I just want to make a comment. So the, 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 other, the other side is very important in the, mm -hmm. the, the, the fat around our organs. So many a time we don't realize overweight, we may not be overweight, but we still may have more fat around our organs. And that's the problem. And because of organs were not meant to have a lot of fat around them. And so even a mild, mild obesity can be very dangerous, even though it may not look like that we have a lot of weight gain. But the organs don't like having all this fat sitting around them, which creates many, many diff difficult symptoms. So mostly if you see around the abdomen, you have a thin layer of fat, which is normal. But in obese patients, it's a thick layer of fat, and, uh, and they are not going to perform good metabolic function. If you see how the BMI is the um, increase, uh, with the, of course, with the weight. It used to be 25 is the normal BMI. Now it is becoming more than 25 or 30. When it is 30, it is obesity. And it has, again, to do with dietary changes, what do you think about this, Sandra, about the dietary changes which we have in the obesity? Well, the dietary changes are that uh, I did not realize what I was eating was unhealthy until I realized it was unhealthy. So we at medical societies, which you would sit down and drink pop and have all these things, which really are very delicious. I mean, imagine a Sprite and put a little, little, little you know, lemon into that it's so very delicious without realizing that you are you know putting in close to 50 if not more of petroleum based chemicals in that very sparkling wonderful soda you know? and it's meant precisely to fool the brain and the body and the eyes and the taste so that you like more of that it's very habit forming and people don't realize that i didn't realize that so so by not realizing that doesn't give us an excuse that we continue to do that. So our job here is to help people recognize what is nutritionally vital food and what is nutritionally bankrupt food, which looks like food, but it really isn't. You know, the colors may look like food, but they're not. They're, they're yes. factories spewing out uh, you know, uh, food-like yes. dyes and colors and you know, aromas. Uh, which are really based on petroleum. It's pl all plastic. And, and so thus, that is leading to all that epidemic that Zada was talking about. Right. So if you see here... Um, and still we are very hungry. Yeah. Even after eating those foods, we still don't feel satisfied because it's not real food. Because the brain is not comprehending that you have eaten good food. Brain is mostly used to having a good meal and it uh, is happy brain when it is an unhappy brain it really is looking when we are hungry after eating means it's looking for some nourishment some good food right yes so 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 by knowing that we won't we don't have to get into any diets we just have to eat nutritionally satisfying food and that's the point nobody diets never work these surgeries never work, you know, I mean, they work for a period of time. I have somebody who had three surgeries done and he's still is obese. Well, because he's still eating what is not nurturing and nourishing, you know. Right. And so recognizing, you know, uh, that it's important to eat the right healthy food, and I just want to insert that at this moment, we do an on-site class here where we just do that, and it's actually coming up this Wednesday. So Janet and I, myself and, you know, Zayda and all of us, you know, we, we bring a healing art of how to use food, as a mood changing medicine uh, and cholesterol lowering medicine and so forth. And we are introducing many of these programs so that people have a hands on experience of knowing what is healthy foods and how to eat them, how to prepare them. So, in fact, we are living in toxic environment in which we have inexpensive fast foods which we go grab. The sizes of a burger, for example, is getting bigger and bigger. It used to be a small burger, now it's like a six-pounder. <laughs> <laughs> you can feed a family of ten. Yeah. And, and double cheeseburgers, double hamburgers. 
extra large fries, so name it. So a nutritional origin of obesity because of the processed foods, portion sizes, unsaturated meals, fast food, snacking, all of these have contributed a lot to the obesity without realizing. Actually, we don't even realize what we are doing. And we keep doing this over and over again to the point that we really get sick and we become obese. And or, I mean, like this morning, I just saw somebody who said, I don't have energy. That was a major complaint. I don't have energy. And then drinking energy drink doesn't help. Mm -hmm. Good. And then we talk about nutrition. Then we have also that we couch potatoes. We don't exercise. We don't actually do anything. And even if you're eating small amount of food, if you are not exercising, if you are not losing calories, what are you doing? Building, building your fat because eventually all the food what you eat is converted into fat um, so this kind of a lifestyle in which we are sitting in front of the TVs like couch potatoes physical activities avoided and uh, computer video games are becoming very common people sit there for hours and hours actually and then you know going in the cars and not walking and even if you go one mile we prefer to go in the car so it is becoming like a living which is just a standard living and fitness is too far from that living. So stay there. So that's why we do movement therapies here at Seclair and Greta is one of our movement therapists who helps people move and have fun with life. Right Greta? That's right. Yeah. So we can have fun. What do you call it? moving our booties and having joy out of that? Uh, that's a technical term. I just want to make sure. <laughs> Another important thing, again, like uh, when we do movements with Greta, is that it's so fun. Um, it's not like a, you're going to the gym and you're sitting, oh my god, I have to do the exercise. So it's like a schedule exercises sometimes do not fit to your schedules, and it becomes very difficult that you know you push yourself or you, you motivate yourself to go to the gym. So any activity which is enjoyable for you, any activity playing tennis or going out or just moving and dancing actually on the music. That is uh, that is wonderful because you don't have to go anywhere at the same time. You're getting much benefit out of it. You have anything to no. say? Sounds good. So again, when when we talk about the treatment um, and drugs for the obesity, what is the treatment? Again, we talk about the diet. Dietary changes are very important um, to deal with obesity. Proper nutrition, um, exercise and activity, and then behavior change. And what is the behavior change? It falls into completely the same to people who are depressed, people who are immotivated because of depression and many other mental illnesses. We saw that we talk, I think, much better than me how the obesity uh, is getting for those people and how, how those people are fighting with, with, uh, with their uh, weight. Nice. So, I mean, I'll just kind of give the fresh this morning's sessions. Pain limits people's mobility and can create difficulties in their life. So I saw somebody today and she began to say, well, and then we also do pain management program here too where we help people with chronic pain not the acute pain, but the chronic pain management here. And she said, now my pain is better. I'm out there. It seems that the world was gone by, and I don't fit in within the world anymore. But at least now she wants to be fitting in within the world because her pain is less. And I was just teasing her. I said, well, why don't you start dancing and moving around and have fun with life and symbolically speaking, really having a life again. So when I said that dancing with life, that means having a purpose of life and the meaning of life and movement of life. And, and, and so, so mobility is so very important. Uh, so I was talking to Omer. Uh, he used to enjoy watching a lot of sports on the television. And now he actually is in the sports. So he's going for martial arts and you know he's enjoying that. That's much more effective. And I was asking him what's he looking forward to doing that. He goes, I look forward to doing that activity. That's what I look forward to doing. Wasn't that true, Mr. Omar? Yeah. All right. yeah so mo mo movement is so very critical. I mean, we cannot just sit there and, and get better. Exactly. And um, 
and obesity because it's a chronic problem. So first thing is that we, we, we should address the diet change and we should address exercise. And if we are not able to, to uh, meet our standard of weight loss, then of course it's a struggle and then we have drugs and we have surgeries also. So after actually uh, we always recommend our own uh, patients and people where these recommendation would be dietary changes and exercise and activity first and then if it is not doable then weight loss with the medications. Uh, so usually with that said I would just add something that the healthcare provider whenever they see the obesity they see the uh, body mass index to help decide who may benefit from the drugs. So body mass index is the same what BMI I was talking about. So the normal is 25 and it comes to BMI of 30 or greater. That is where, or if you are BMI of 27, but you have medical problems such as high blood pressure, you have diabetes. Then again, there is a protocol for uh, having some uh, medication or drug uh, given to those kind of patients. And uh, I think uh, the drug, uh, Drugs are many, which um, I think, Sabda, would you address? Uh, which kind of a drug would you give to your obese patients? Um, so we are in the midst of starting a program that will be initiated in, in early next year, in January, where we will be using effective management strategies. Because as part of the sciences, we believe in using medical sciences to an advantage of an individual. No different than if somebody has a broken bone, we will recommend that it gets fixed. Uh, but then I also want to make sure that you don't break your bones again and then be in a healthful living. So, so we'll be choosing medicines to support a person's recovery from a very obese uh, kind of dynamic. And so the medicines, there are newer medicines and some old medicines. Uh, this session is not meant to give the details of those, but we'll be using, we had not in our center used any of those medicines before, but we will be employing those medicines, treatments as a stepping stone towards a goal though, not a living lifestyle. So I would not like to have somebody living those medicines for the rest of their life, but almost like stepping stones towards a goal so that they can achieve their goals of healthy living in eventuality. Um, so having said that, I would want to kind of simplify that. Uh, we can, we, there's a lot more subject matter we can talk about, you know, the surgery than the thing. But today's goal was to really kind of introduce an upcoming program recognize some of the struggles that very various people have. Uh, so we see as if, if somebody has alcoholism. Um, uh, Jim, would you say people choose to become alcoholic? No, they do not. Okay, so nobody wakes up, says, well, I'll grow up to be the fantastic alcoholic one day and get a PhD in alcoholism? I don't believe that's a goal or an ambition. Okay, so how does that happen? Are there people who, are, who, have, who have alcoholism? Right. No? Uh, gambling difficulties or, or, or say even uh, depressions or say hypertension or glaucomas, right? So nobody wants to have them, right? But people have them. Okay? So nobody wants to become obese or have the consequences of obesity in their life, but they, people do have those conditions. So our goal is to treat people with respect, dignity, honor, without shame and guilt, but opportunities and wisdom and so we will be launching that program today was an introduction to that idea we'll have part two conversation next week is there something you want to say yeah I, just, yeah I just wanted to add one thing is that there are people who think that the same way we were talking about the alcohol that the obesity is also genetic yes there is a gene for obesity but that's wrong only there are very two percent of the people maybe they are so much obese that they have a gene for that which is also can be controllable because important thing nowadays with science is learning is that gene is there but activation and deactivation of the gene is under your control so it is important to promote healthy lifestyles like our eating behavior physical activity and rest of the things and avoid those behaviors which are actually damaging to your body so gene is not exactly which is playing role in the obesity Absolutely. That is what just happened to add that. Which is a very good point that our, our genes I mean that's the whole uh, domain of epigenetics. Uh, I was listening to, uh, you know, a scientific session and also for an NPR this morning. You know how our bugs can be inflammatory or anti-inflammatory, and so we we need to have good bugs in our body and good 
and maybe a good bug of idea that we can live healthfully and beautifully as well. So on that note, I thank everyone who, uh, among our technical team, had made this possible. Mike and Swen, and we had the opportunity of now having Greta join our team. Uh, so you'll be seeing her in the upcoming, upcoming sessions. And we just have a new student who's just watching us and seeing what the heck is going on here. Uh, that's part of life too, so you see what mm -hmm. we do. Uh, but students also get involved in these conversations and, and sessions, and so is you know, our counselors. And I want to thank Zyla for really kind of preparing the slides. I always wish to have slides and never had them. But she, <laughs> she, she has made my wish come true. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. thank you all. Thank you.